Hello and welcome to the ImpactU.Film podcast and thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Steve Destante, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me today and thank you for showing the film. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Uh, let's get to the point here because we have a lot of a lot of things to cover here. Um, I want to take it. I want to take you back a little bit here. I want to take you back for you to introduce yourself to us. Who are you? I called you a global entrepreneur. So, who are you? Where do you come from? And what got you into all of this? Uh, my story always starts with I was born an entrepreneur. Literally born an entrepreneur. My first business was at six years old, and I would go to the horse trails behind my house. And I would collect the horse manure in my wheelbarrow and bring it down to sell to my neighbor um, around my backyard, my surrounding neighbors. And they'd give me a dollar. And there was this Miss Barker who would look up, at, look up at me with her English accent and say, thank you, Stephen, for feeding my tomatoes and my cucumbers. And then she'd give me the dollar with that sparkle in her eye. And um, it was my way of communicating with the world. I mean, I was, I'm, I'm an introvert by nature. And so having a conversation about business seems to work a little bit better for me. And usually I'll end the story with, and I've been selling shit ever since pretty much. <laughs> um, but no, no, I'm not, you're not off the hook yet here. Let's continue with your progression here as you went through businesses, because you said you're an entrepreneur. So you're of course a serial entrepreneur, right? You probably tried it many different adventures here. What are the things that continuously came back to you over and over and over again in thoughts and ideas and emotions and in meeting people? Mm. So in business, so why am I an entrepreneur? Um, I think it's, I've been told we're unemployable, right? We want to create things ourselves. An involved entrepreneur is an artist. So we use our businesses as our template. So we're able to, create a business that's relevant to us. Maybe it's an interest we have in life. Um, maybe it's an intention or purpose that we are driven by. Um, in my case, there were no entrepreneurship programs in school. And when I graduated in my undergrad, um, I took a degree in accounting because I was told it was a language of all businesses. And as I spoke to my dad, who's my confidant, he said, you know, there's a lot of people getting older and there's this thing called baby boomers that's going to happen. And maybe you want to get into the investment world or so. And so that kind of guided me. You kind of look for those little things along the way um, to guide you to that next step. So I was an accountant. Um, didn't love being an accountant, but I did love being able to understand the DNA of a business from a financial perspective. And that served me really well over my careers um, in different businesses, being able to understand the financial aspect of things. Um, and then just getting into the world of finance kind of dragged me in. Um, and I say dragged me in because it's filled with all sorts of potholes, regulation, challenges. And, and I really wasn't happy. Um, so along my entrepreneurial journey to get to that point, I started to realize there has to be more than this. How could I possibly create something more meaningful in my life? And what I learned was is a thing called impact investing. We manage billions of dollars in my investment firm. And I believe that my reason for being on this earth, not to get too crazy with you know why we exist uh, philosophically, is to bring capital to entrepreneurs to help them scale and grow. And I learned about impact investing, which was only available to um, uh, accredited investors or wealthy people. And I made it my mission to have impact investing, investing in things that are environmentally or socially beneficial, available to the masses, to people who didn't meet the criteria to be an accredited investor. And that was step one of my journey. I met an attorney who was on a board uh, for a group called EO, the Entrepreneurs Organization. And that's how we met. Um, I mean, thank you for, the, for, for embracing EO and the entrepreneurs. Um, but this attorney happened to tell me that, you know, 
there's a whole world out there called impact investing and I'm an impact attorney. He had asked me what was, you know, what was my business? And he had asked me why I, um, you know, why I was doing what I was doing. And it turns out that the things that resonated with him was the fact that if you Google Tesla's biggest fan or Tesla's number one fan, I'm the first hit because of my love for electric cars. And if you look um, at our structure, our business, we had created a building that's a lead platinum building, the highest level of efficiency. So it's kind of been on the outskirts of my life, but it really came in full force when I met this attorney, uh, Chintan Panchel in New York City, when I was in the New York City chapter of EO. And Chintan did deals for billionaires who got good returns on their money, but also did good. And that really set me ablaze. It really caused me to want to do even more. And when we met, which was through the UN, most specifically Will Kennedy, who is the connector of all connectors, I believe, um, from the Office of Partnerships, you know, we the UN had been looking for a voice of entrepreneurs, and you, Dr. Tarabishi, created the UN's International MSME Day, or as I like to call it, um, you know, Entrepreneurship Day, which I think is June 26th. Did I get that right? Or 27th? 27. 27. June 27th, which was amazing. I know you did that with Argentina, which you needed an official government to do that. But that was another great step in my life, looking, wow, the UN really gets it. And the UN really needs us because what I was told, and you saw in the film, I don't know if you know him, but Sergio Fernandez de Cordova, um, mm -hmm. he's kind of the networker of networkers. Um, he's got a Latino, uh, of Latino descent, and when I had met up with him and I said, hey, I'm looking for somebody to be able to um, help raise the prominence of EO and really work with the mindset of an entrepreneur, he goes, dude, I'm telling you. He goes, the UN is looking for entrepreneurs. He goes, we're looking for people. He says, when they came out with these SDGs in 2015, he said, all these multi-billion dollar companies wanted to you know, make a difference and, and fulfill these goals in a couple of years. You know what they figured out? They couldn't move the ship. He's the entrepreneurs were the ones who had the heart, the soul to make a difference in the world. And that's been my experience as well. So you know, the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals to my left, as we all know them, hopefully everybody that's viewing is either getting an education or knows them really well, became my North Star to be able to educate, inspire, and celebrate entrepreneurs that are looking to bring their business to a whole new level or identify which world challenges they're looking to solve. And then, you know, igniting impact over my other shoulder is a documentary film I had made. I actually have two versions of it. First one's called Impact, then Igniting Impact, which was to bring to the world stories about entrepreneurs that are well, in your business. Hold on, hold on. We're, you're not off the hook yet. We're not going to switch to the movie yet. Because okay. I, I mentioned to you that this is going to be a little bit about you because, you know, I teach classes at GW and I also mm -hmm. work with a lot of people at ICSB here. The, the, the documentary is absolutely fantastic. Thank but you. I want to I talk about the moment where, where you were or what crossed your mind when the idea came to you say, we need some sort of way to capture this, a documentary, a way to capture this, this passion. I call it this, this you could, I love the word igniting because it really creates a lot of energy here. When was that moment and what was your, what was your heart thinking? Not your mind, your heart thinking. So I had mentioned about electric cars with Tesla, my, my claim to fame there, Tesla's number one fan. That came from a film that I wouldn't be surprised if everybody on this call, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, interview have, has seen, which was Revenge of the Electric Car, which was put together. It gives the history. First, there was Who Killed the Electric Car. Chris Payne did that one, as well as Revenge of the Electric Car. And it chronicled in that particular version, Revenge, Elon Musk's journey. And it was for an entrepreneurial mind 
and discipline and thought process, I knew that on tr that documentaries really worked very well for us to get an immersive experience. And in my role with EO with the UN, being the ambassador of entrepreneurship for all these entrepreneurs, I needed a mechanism to be able to demonstrate to people how we could make a difference. And it was, I was at the UN and I was talking with an entrepreneur and he was telling me his story. And what I learned was I could be a very good storyteller to be able to share the stories of other people, to inspire them to do other things. Then came the hard part, which was, okay, do you, do you really have the ability to do this? In, in, in truth and in entrepreneurship speak, it's just a matter of, okay, here's the idea, let's just do it. And so I was talking to somebody the other day and they told me, I'm going to get my MFA in uh, master, I don't have to tell anybody here what an MFA is, um, their, their MFA in, in documentary filmmaking. I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. Or you could just do it, you know, you can kind of figure it out and make that happen. And that's what I started to do. Um, and so Peter Diamandis is a friend. He's the person in charge of Singularity University, Abundance 360, Bold Capital. He's got a whole bunch of different companies. And I was at an event in, uh, in LA with, with Peter and um, I was searching for a filmmaker who would get it in a really, really deep way. And that's how I met Akira Chan, Akira Chan and we partnered up uh, to put all this together, to give it the magic, the breath, and, you know, we call myself a, a producer, but I'm more of a creative producer. A creative producer gets involved in the nuts and bolts of all those things, the music, the, the titles, the, you know, and, and there's still little things that tweak me with the film from time to time because um, I've seen it so many times. But I'll be honest with you, I enjoy it. And the idea for me was to be able to scale and grow and be able to share this with the world. And so I was... I, I was at the UN when it happened, hearing the story of an entrepreneur. And I said, God, nobody tells these stories. And entrepreneurship's gotten very sexy lately, right? Over the last five, 10 years, we used to be the unemployable people. And now all of a sudden we're somebody, you know, we're not just the dysfunctional people who can't take a boss. We're the people who actually can do it um, and share our experiences. And so that's, that's part of it. And then inspiring students who always think that entrepreneurship is a great thing, but what could they do? How could they tie it together? And, and, and the story is made to do that. And, you know, it's just great to be able to have a piece that you love and be able to share it with the world um, on a pretty regular basis for them to, to, to really get a transference of energy from me to we, how can we put this all together in a big way? And that's just my thing. I, I, I want to, you know, always aspire to a higher level and doing a documentary film is great because I have no business doing a documentary film. I'm doing another one. Um, but you know what? Uh, it's, it's something that allows me to share stories in a really good immersive way. And the entrepreneurial brain gets it. They really do understand it when they see the film. When you put the, when you put the documentary together, and this is my way of speaking here, in, in your heart and in your mind, there's a couple, maybe two or three underlying themes that, that always stick to you, that every time you watch it and that you say to yourself, yeah, it's always there. You always resonate with it. I'll give you an example. For ICSB, for the last four or five years, we've been talking about this thing called humane entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship, but in a humane way. In a humane way. The, this movie captures this theme very well here. But what is the themes or the underlying values that this that, that this documentary brings out? What is it from your perspective? You said you've seen many times, probably resonates with you over and over again. I've written some, but I wanted to hear what you had to, to say about this. Underlying themes. Well, these are people who are tying into something they're passionate about. So passion is clearly one of them. The other part is, you know, the, I like to get to the culture of the entrepreneur, who that person truly is. Why are they doing it? Are they doing it in order to make the world a better place? Or are they doing it for money? There's nothing wrong or evil about money. But if that's your only motivation, 
do something else. You know, it's not it's not worth the hell that you're going to go through and being an entrepreneur. And that happens on a pretty regular basis. Um, that that those are the themes that I look at is what is the culture of the company? And is the entrepreneur truly connected and passionate about it? Or is this just another thing for them? Because if it's just another thing, I'm not interested in, um, in, in making them part of the film or part of my community, honestly. So we have this small little um, virus here, pandemic called COVID-19 here, that basically I say to people, it's nature is one, technology is zero. But, but your documentary comes front and center here because it really ties well to see what's going on in the world and where and and what your doc the message of your documentary here what's your reaction when you saw the COVID-19 all playing out and your documentaries it's there where there's a lot of themes in it what what's your reaction to this well we actually started another podcast uh, we were very ready for for COVID-19 from an entrepreneurial perspective the truth be told that entrepreneurially, it's if you have the right mindset and entrepreneurship is all about mindset, suddenly you've been given a clean slate, a blank field, an open world with no rules. That's it, plain and simple. We're able to do what we need to do. The government in the US is handing us money, right? Which is going to be forgiven if you meet certain criteria. And the, the title of my other podcast, I have two. One is Impact You, the letter U, and the other is Pivot or Perish. And what we did was we pivoted during that process, and it was relatively seamless for us from the perspective of it gives us the ability to, well, Winston Churchill said it best, Never waste a good crisis. And as an entrepreneur, this gives us an opportunity to improve our businesses in ways that are more sustainable and we're able to do some really amazing things. I do know a lot of businesses, entrepreneurs that, have, that were decimated, but guess what? They rose up and they did something else. And that's what we do. And we, we work with one another to um, continue our mindsets because we can get dragged into the toilet with certain things, our, you know, our, our, um, our mental state is the most important thing. Um, and so to pivot during that time was very important to focus on what was going on around the world and trying to be part of the solution was very important. I created communities of entrepreneurs who were not only part of EO, but also part of a geographic region to be able to share information to get people through. So you know, I've had to talk a bunch of people off the ledge um, during the pandemic because they were looking, and we, we talk about this, you know, when you're driving, if you look at the guardrail, you're going to hit it. And they were looking at the guardrail of their business. They weren't focusing on the future. They were focusing on the danger. And when you, as an entrepreneur, focus only on the danger, guess what? It's going to come straight at you. It happens. You actually will it to come into your life. And it doesn't do you any benefit. So during the pandemic, being able to be there for other entrepreneurs, to be able to help them get through, make the tough decisions. You know, Jack Welsh, I had the opportunity to meet once, and he said, you know what the greatest thing about entrepreneurs is their optimism. And the worst thing about entrepreneurs is their optimism, you know, never knowing when to, you know, cut bait and move on. So, you know, during this process, you know, we were consulting one another. Okay, do we need to reduce staff? Do we need to cut off expenses? Guess what? They're every the world is giving three three months of deferment. Take advantage of it. Do it. And entrepreneurs are like, no, I don't need to do that. I'll be okay. This thing will be over in a week. You know, just unrealistic expectations. I said, are you crazy? If you're given three months worth of deferment, a quarter of the year, twenty five percent of the year to be able to, to, to hold off making payments, throw it in a bank account, have it waiting there. So it's really the mindset. And we were well prepared for a shift in our field of, uh, you know, our normal field or life as we know it to evolve to a whole nother place. And in that period, we feel that we've gone five years technologically inside of three or four months. And we were able to take things that were on the back burner and bring them right to the front because now they became relevant, but they also allowed our business to be even more sustainable and, and, and be able to go through these sort of challenges. 
Steve, I'm going to I'm going to push back now a little bit here and I'm going to ask you some difficult questions here because we face it. We know it here. Even though we are the ones that are advocating for it, we also have to be very broad and understanding where, where the different noises are coming from here. So, one of the one of the big noises are coming here saying these SDGs don't work. Right? There's no way of measuring them. The metrics are confusing even though we're trying so hard. We've done the MDGs and they were a disaster so and so disaster. Now we're doing the SDGs. This is just the best is propaganda. These are conversations that are happening, right? Mm -hmm. And these, these are can be global. These are can be high level organization conversations. But at the same time, from an entrepreneurial perspective, entrepreneurs, small business owners, micro business owners, saying, "I'm trying to survive here," and you're talking to me about the SDGs. Mm -hmm. where, where are you coming from, right? Don't you see I have other priorities here? These are conversations that are happening. Hmm. What's, your, what, what's your reaction to these conversations? What do you say to them? We're in them most of the time. We hear them. What do you say? Yeah. So the, the, the way we get through some of the most challenging times is by having purpose and our personal conviction to something that's super important to us. The SDGs do an amazing job. Let's just get the facts down. 193 governments took three years to deliberate post the Great Recession, right? And they came up with these SDGs, a 15-year agenda, which has got 169 targets, which are those underlying items to each one of these SDGs, brilliantly put together. But the difference is that they, they engage citizens, entrepreneurs, businesses globally to be able to be part of the agenda, to help make it move forward in that way. Prior to the pandemic, it was starting to get adopted. And people who tied into their values and their principles were, were more likely to continue their journey of entrepreneurship, which, again, is not always easy, but because it tied into something that was really, really important to them. So when you are tied to something that just grabs your heart and pulls you forward, it's a hell of a lot easier than just doing it because, you know, you want to make money. And money is not the end of all for businesses nowadays. It's more about what do you stand for? It's more about your culture. And it's more about being able to share how you are using your business to do good in the world. So I, 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 I understand that when you're in survival mode, it's very difficult. So it's the amygdala, the reptilian part of your brain versus the prefrontal cortex or that part of your brain that makes sense of things. When you're stuck in that reptilian brain, when you're in that reactive mode or that survival mode, nothing makes sense. Absolutely nothing. But part of the entrepreneurial journey is learning to get through those things for the benefit of yourself and others, because that's where all of the opportunities lie. Because businesses are closing their doors. They're looking for other organizations to be able to hold their hand and get them through it. During this pandemic, we closed on a $200 million deal. Like we closed on another business we acquired. That's what we do. We take it as an opportunity to help other people. That business needed help. We took care of it. And we're able to continue to grow. We've grown tremendously. And, you know, um, during the pandemic, we continue to grow because of our focus on doing really good things with people's money. Um, and, you know, if you can connect yourself with purpose and passion in your business, there's no stopping us. So I want to go into the documentary now because I kept looking at all the different entrepreneurs and every time I watched it a couple of times and every time I keep changing the order of which one I like the most. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a, a, a problems here with this, with, with, with which one I resonate with. It's, it's different every time. I guess mm. it's the moment here. But selecting those entrepreneurs, selecting yeah. those fantastic group of entrepreneurs, what was the underlying connection between all of them? What did you see that every time you did it, saying, oh my God, here, here it goes again. I could just feel it. What might that be? So when you look at the SDGs, right, who do they resonate with? And in the U.S., I was told the SDGs were going to be the most difficult for entrepreneurs to adopt because we don't care about anybody but ourselves. That's what I was told. And it turned out to be a little true. It was a little tough uh, to get through, even to this day. I mean, I was on a phone call, as I'd mentioned to you when we were preparing for this, with UAE this morning. Um, and they're doing work with the SDGs inside the EO, the entrepreneur community. But the the... Entrepreneurs themselves, I don't know if you took note, but there were five women and three men. Women 
have more of a sense of doing good in their businesses from inception. It just seems to be what we've experienced with the SDGs. I'm not making broad assumptions. I'm just saying what my experience has been. And when we started with those eight entrepreneurs, it was um, the intention was put out there into the world. And suddenly they started getting fed to me. So David Katz, the guy who did the plastic bank, is part of EO. And he had a story um, about how he had you know, cashed out of one business. He was standing in the Philippines and there he sees all this garbage in the water saying, what the heck, this is the most beautiful water in the world. And there's all this plastic. Where's this plastic going? And he learned about all sorts of other challenges that were going on in the world. And I said, man, nobody knows your story. That's amazing. And so on and so on. And, you know, I, I'm curious what your favorite story is. But for me, the smile, the laugh, that I really love is Majora Carter. She just, you know, she, I love her line, which is people ask me, why am I doing this? And, or how, why would you do that? Or how could you do that? And I say, why not? I'm an entrepreneur. You know, um, what are your favorite stories? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, the, the, I, was, I was watching it today while I was getting on here. And the thing that resonated with me, because I'm also preparing for to teach class tonight, were, were the two, um, the, young, uh, the young woman from Venezuela. Yeah. With the petroleum, right. And, and, and they made a statement and saying, you, and then this is what they said. They were kind of self-reflecting themselves. We're in a meeting and they are, and we're thinking that they probably are thinking, what are these young females doing here trying to disrupt the whole petroleum yeah. industry here? That's powerful for me because that resonates showing that the power of the youth, the youth are here. Yeah. They're, they're going to change the world. And this is where I believe the SDGs are heading with 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 the, with the youth because those are the ones that are going to move us forward, right? Absolutely. And 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 I think this is where the opportunity lies here. But again, this is not about me. This is about you. Hmm. Let's let's say we, we we meet again five years from now. We do hmm. a five year reunion and we invite these entrepreneurs back. Okay, what what might you think the story will be like with them five years from now? I know a huge success, but what might be coming back on saying when you ask him, why did you do this in the first place? What would their story be? Will it be the same or different now with knowing everything that's happening? No, I think there's going to be an evolution of some of them. Um, I think they would be evolved. And I do know that um, many of them get approached by larger companies who are looking to buy their do good in do goodedness <laughs> so they become very attractive as acquisition candidates to still stay on and do their thing um, i think you'll see great success obviously with daniela blanco um you know as a doctorate student she's go she's she's just moving forward in a very big way i still stay in touch with her as well i stay in touch with all of them as a matter of fact the entrepreneur uh the the entrepreneur gang leader uh blanco de Nero from true colors I, I mentored him for about a year and a half and he just started buying properties and he's, he's, he, he's doing rental real estate, but he's doing it with a good uh, intention in that he's having part of the rent go to uh, charity. So he's kind of building it into his DNA. So I think what happens with people who are part of projects like this, because I know this has happened, is suddenly the light goes on and they change your perspective on what they do and never again are they not going to have a purpose oriented business whether they stay in that business or move on is another story because i think as our journey continues we become very narrow we start to narrow what our what our intention and our focus is and we become very much more aware of what we want to be known for what our legacy um, will be when we leave this earth. That is that that's a big part of who we are. We want to we want to know that we made a difference. So um, I know we have limited time here, but we'll continue a little bit here. As I mentioned to you, International Council for Small Business was founded in 1955, and our DNA were educators and researchers. So we have this academic underlying here, and why us and EO worked well together because we were on the grounds as entrepreneurs. So we complemented each other perfectly well for MSME Day here. But I, I want to I ask you this question. As an entrepreneur, as a successful entrepreneur, right, I teach a course called Business Essentials. That's what it's called, Business Essentials. Right? I teach a course on creativity and innovation and one on entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question. Just out of the blue, this is unscripted here. What 
what message will you send? What three different key takeaways you can say to my students, but also to all the educators and, and researchers from ICSB saying, focus on this, take this and put it in your toolkit, in your, in your, in your cognitive toolkit as you move forward. What might that be looking at post COVID-19? What might that be? You're on the spot now. <laughs> yeah, no, those are, those aren't too difficult. Um, there's a unique ability a superpower that we all possess. It's different for all of us. And often we are not even aware of what that superpower might be. And often we have to talk to others. What do they rely on us for? What do they believe that we are really great at? Because it's so easy for us. Time has doesn't even exist when we do those things. And those are the areas, those are the focuses that we can put as entrepreneurs for our business or our future, because it is so relevant. Um, I know I love architecture of big things. Um, so I'm working on an uh, artificial intelligence project right now, um, as well as another film, as well as, you know, I like to have a few things in the hopper. So if I get bored with one, I can hop over to the other. So that's that's part of who I am. So one is, what is your unique ability? That's really important. The next is your mindset. How do you remain in a positive mindset throughout this process? Because as an entrepreneur, it's not what's happening here and now. It's being able to vis be a visionary to the future. And how do you get through all of those times? And it's through mindset. And it's impossible to be in a bad mindset when you're grateful. So taking time to be grateful along the journey is a really important part to keep your mindset in line and keep you moving forward. I pay a lot of attention to my sleep, um, to meditation, to being able to stay healthy as a human being, that's all part of an entrepreneur because we are the machine to be able to generate the future of a business or concept. We take nothing and create it into something. Michael Gerber, who wrote the book, The E-Myth, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Michael, but he talks about entrepreneurs who are technicians and they're not truly entrepreneurs. So the poodle clipper opens a poodle clipping shop and the carpenter becomes a contractor and so on and so on. And what they do is they end up creating a business that is actually a job. And the reason they went into business in the first place, which is to get a better life, ends up being the bane of their existence because they suddenly have the worst person, a crazy person for a boss themselves. And so, being able to create a business that doesn't require you a business is most important, thinking into the future and then taking that unique ability and making that your primary focus. So you can't do everything in business um, forever, but as you start to scale, start taking things off the table that you're not so good at. And so working on the business, not in the business, creating a business that has processes um, and creating a business that is able to sustain itself without the entrepreneur is the trick. That's how we do it. And then last but not, last but not least is, you know, from the immortal words, I believe it was a Biggie Smalls, chase the dream, not the paper. So create that big, hairy, audacious goal or BHAG and go after the dream. Don't be too practical about, well, I could never do that because I could never imagine. When I met the people who were in EO years ago, it was actually Michael Gerber who introduced me, the author from the E-Myth. Um, they had just gotten back from a trip from Egypt. And this was probably, I don't know, 20 plus years ago. And I called it the Billion Dollar Boys Club because I could never imagine being in the class that these people were in. And that was just my own mind's limiting beliefs because often we create these things called glass ceilings where we hit them and then we bounce off of them. And those are typically between your ears and you can't get past them until you acknowledge them to move on. So I don't know if any of those tidbits could uh, could help. In no, your no, they resonate very well here. It reminds me when 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 I asked the United Nations uh, for to create the MSME Day, 
And I was told point blank, like they were just looking at me, said, Ayman, you, you did a great job with the conference, but and on the whole idea of MSME Day, but the answer is no. And I was like, no, why not? We we have everything, we've done everything. Yeah. He said, Ayman, there's two reasons for a no. The first one is that we don't give an MSME Day or an International Day for a person, yeah. right? Or for an, or a nonprofit organization. Only countries are allowed to create an International Dime Day. So they thought I would be upset. I was very happy because yeah. I knew exactly what I needed. I need to go find a country. <laughs> and you did and, it. And, and we, found, we found our gracious partners of Argentina that stepped up and did a fantastic job. So I mean, saying can this. I, can, I, can I talk about that day for a moment when we sure. got to meet a few years ago? It was great because we were there and we had the educators who were all ICSB members talking about literally kindergartens with entrepreneurship programs and, and talking about, you know, the youngest of people being able to have these entrepreneurship programs. And, um, and then you said, Steve, I want your, all the people you brought just to scrap their speeches and just talk from the heart, tell us stories. And I was like, oh, okay. And it's funny. So I've been to the UN so many times now, you and I both, right? What do people do when they go to the UN? They have a speech, they read it. They don't care what the question is. And they read it just to get on the camera at the UN with their message being told. And here we are thrown on the spot. And entrepreneurs don't mind that. And, you know, it was great of you uh, and Winslow, uh, Sergeant, who was there as well, who, who said, just tell us some stories. So we told some stories, some of the challenges that we've had and some of the, you know, things that really broke us, um, you know, over the years, like what were the things in your most challenging times? So that, that, that's, um, yeah, that was really meaningful. So thank you for all of your efforts with that. No, absolutely. And also Ahmed Osman, the, the chair there, he did a fantastic job. So what's your future plans? What, what, I know you mentioned a couple, but what is it? What, what should we be looking for uh, coming soon? What might that be from you? So, you know, part of my reason for being on earth, as I had mentioned, is to bring capital to entrepreneurs to help them scale and grow. We're doing a capital raise for a company called World Tree right now. They grow the world's fastest growing trees. They grow to full size in 10 years. As a matter of fact, I have a piece of one of these trees. This is a seven-year-old tree <laughs> and it's so light. Um, and these are all bands. It's so light and it's wood that's used for like um, really great um, uh, um, surfboards and guitars and blinds and things. So I'm raising capital for them. That's part of my why I I'm looking to do that. Um, more meaningfully. I'm doing some VR projects, virtual reality projects, where I want to bring people immersive experiences to be able to understand a company inside of three to five minutes. Um, I'm doing a film. Um, I'm working on a film called Impact X, which our firm, in response to the uh, social injustices and the racial unrest that was going on, all of the challenging situations that were going on and still go on, in the United States, uh, we made a commitment to SDG 10, which is reduced inequalities. And how are we gonna do that? And so we've got a whole agenda for the year and I would like that agenda to include March 21st, uh, 2021, which is International and Racism Day, uh, Day for the UN. Um, but we've created a whole agenda. So we just did an event, MLK's I Have a Dream, on the day, August 28th, um, and we had an orator who's the only one that's licensed by the MLK estate to deliver that speech. And then we had a woman, Edith Lee Payne, who showed up, uh, who was part of this, uh, this event. And she, um, she was 12 years old. It was her birthday on August 28th, 1963, her 12th birthday. And she told us what was going on there. And then Stefan Ferguson, who was the orator delivered that message. So that was one of the things that we had done inside the firm in order to be able to give back to the community. Um, so what am I doing? I am raising capital for entrepreneurs who are looking to scale and grow, but they need to be impactful. 
and they need to have a great culture and they need to be passionate about what they're doing. Not that they just walk away because they're out of money and, and, and they're on to the next thing. No, I want something that's, again, a visceral connection to what they're doing. Um, film, you know, that's Juneteenth is Juneteenth 2021 is what I'm putting on the books as our date to be able to unveil uh, Impact X, which is a story of black and brown entrepreneurs who are making a difference with their businesses. We're also talking about the challenges that they've gone through being black and brown entrepreneurs. So those are some of the things that we're working on at this point. And then meanwhile, we continue to grow the business at a record pace. Uh, we continue to focus on, on, as I mentioned before, artificial intelligence, uh, taking our data, that big data that we have, and, and, and making sense of it in a way that is predictive. Um, and so that's a big part of what we're doing and just having fun, you know, enjoying yeah. my life as an entrepreneur, cause I'm able to just create stuff and have fun and have great people that I work with. I don't think you're, I don't think you're working. I think you're playing. I but am playing. Like, <laughs> they got to come up with a better word for work. I don't know what it is. I'll tell my students, I am not working. I am playing here, which is, yeah. which is bad. Um, this, we will share this with ICSB and members and, and, and colleagues and family members from all over the world here. You're going to get a lot of requests for you to come oh. back and, and do this. This is the whole plan was to premiere yeah. this, to give the opportunity for our members and other organizations and universities and school to bring you on board. We're also delighted to work with you and, and collaborate with you on, 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 on the March event, also on the premiere of your, of your next uh, documentary. And also we still have on the books June 27, 2021. Uh, you know, we are, we, we are preliminary starting to have these conversations and we want to do something much more impactful, which is really what we're after here. I, I think we passed the stage of awareness. Now it's the stage of let's act. Let's get things going here. So we look forward to it. Well, thank, uh, I mean, thank you so much for your leadership in this movement of connecting the UN with entrepreneurship, education, and so on. It's my honor to be able to offer this film out to ICSB members to be able to use in their classes. I, I think I'd share with you that um, that Babson's using it in one of their entrepreneurship school uh, classes as well. Um, and you know, it's, it's my honor to be able to assist in maybe getting speakers or so, um, entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs, possibly if we have chapters for the entrepreneurs organization in that area. So again, it, it, it's just my pleasure to be able to inspire, educate, and celebrate people who are making a difference in this world, but now create that next group of entrepreneurs that are going to make a big difference in this world. And you're at the precipice of that. You're at the center of all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I want to congratulate you and compliment you on the fantastic work you've done. And in the introduction, I called you global entrepreneur. I have promoted you now to intergalactic entrepreneur. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Me and Elon will be driving our roadsters out of the cars. Right. So, so with that, I want to thank you, Mr. Intergalactic Entrepreneur here. You're welcome to ICSB anytime. Okay. I want to thank all the attendees here. Stay tuned. This is going to continue. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the ImpactU.Film podcast. Listen to other podcasts at ImpactU.Film wherever you listen to your podcast. And again, thanks for joining us.